Every machine in a factory follows commands. But how are these commands written? One of the key languages is ladder programming, easy to read, yet powerful enough to run the most complex machines. In this video, I'll take you through everything you need to know about PLC ladder programming. You will learn what ladder programming is, how the structure of ladder logic works, basic elements you need to understand, and the programming languages used, and finally, a simple example to see ladder logic in action. Ladder programming, also known as ladder logic, is a type of programming language used to control machines in industrial automation. It's called ladder programming because the code looks like a ladder, with vertical lines representing power rails and horizontal lines, called rungs that represent the control logic. The best part is that it's a visual language. That means you don't need to write traditional code. You use symbols like contacts and coils just like in an electrical diagram. Now that we understand what ladder programming is, let's take a closer look at its structure and see how a typical ladder program is built inside a PLC. A PLC ladder program is made up of power rails, rungs, input contacts, output coils, and logic functions. The vertical lines on the left and right sides are called power rails. The left rail represents positive power or logic high, while the right rail represents negative or logic low. You can think of these rails like the positive and negative terminals of a power source. The horizontal lines between the rails are called rungs. Each rung represents one logic operation. This is where you write your program and execute logic. You can add or delete a rung at any time. Inputs are added to the left side of each rung. There are two main types, normally open and normally closed. You just drag and drop these contacts onto the rungs when creating your logic, and they automatically appear on the left side. These contacts represent devices like push buttons, limit switches, or sensors. In PLC ladder logic, outputs are represented as coils. A coil represents a device such as a motor, light, valve, or even memory bits inside the PLC. You can directly assign a specific output terminal in the PLC to a coil. For example, if we assign Y1 to a coil, whenever the coil Y1 is activated in the program, the device connected to Y1 will also be activated. The key point to understand is how a ladder program runs. Ladder logic is not executed like traditional programming languages. It runs from top to bottom and left to right. Top to bottom execution means that for a contact in the lower rung to activate, the conditions in a top rung must be met first. At the same time, logic can also be executed from left to right within a rung. Here, there is no strict sequence. As long as the conditions of the logic are met, the elements on that rung will be activated. We'll cover this in more detail in the advanced lessons, so if you don't fully get it right now, don't worry. Now let's look at the basic elements used in ladder programming. These are the building blocks of any control logic. Contacts, coils, timers, counters, and internal bits are components you'll use again and again to build programs. Let's break them down one by one. Contacts are the basic elements used to check conditions in ladder logic. They represent input conditions in the program. There are mainly two types, normally open and normally closed. A normally open contact closes the circuit when the input is on, while it is represented from this symbol. A normally closed contact opens the circuit when the input is on, and it is represented from this symbol. By default, current passes through a normally closed contact. Next, we have coils. A coil represents an output or an action in a ladder program. Coils are energized when the conditions before them are true. Typically, coils are represented by this symbol. The exact symbol can vary depending on the programming software you use. Outputs such as relays, solenoids, or contactors can be directly assigned to a coil. For example, if we assign the Y2 output terminal to a coil, whenever the coil is energized in the program, it activates the Y2 terminal on the PLC and the connected device responds accordingly. 
Timers are used when you want to introduce delays in your process. For example, you may want a motor to turn on only 5 seconds after an input is given. This is where timers come in. The two most common types of timers are on delay timers and off delay timers. On delay timers, delay turning on the output after the input is activated, while off delay timers, delay turning off the output after the input is deactivated. Another important element in ladder programming is counters. As the name suggests, counters are used to count events, such as the number of objects passing a sensor. In an automated system, you might want to know how many items have been produced as finished products. You may even want to stop a conveyor or motor temporarily after a certain count. This is exactly where counters come in handy. There are two common types of counters, up counters and down counters. Up counters, count events as they occur while down counters, count down from a set value. If you're not familiar with timers or counters yet, don't worry. I'll create a dedicated video explaining them in detail. Let's talk about something really useful in ladder programming, the internal bit. An internal bit is a virtual memory location inside the PLC that can be turned on or off, just like a real output. The key difference is that it doesn't control any physical device. For now, just get familiar with the term. We'll dive deeper into how internal bits work in a dedicated video later. Now you might be wondering, what software is used to program a ladder diagram? PLC programming software is provided by the PLC manufacturer. Let's look at some popular PLC manufacturers and their software for ladder programming. Siemens PLCs are programmed using TIA Portal or Step 7. Allen Bradley PLCs use RS Logix 500. Mitsubishi PLCs use GX Works 2 or GX Works 3. And Shinji PLCs use XCP Pro or XDP Pro. The main difference between PLC software is usually the interface. The structure and logic are almost the same across different platforms. So once you understand how the logic flows and how ladder programming works, you can work with almost any PLC software. In this final session, we'll see how a start-stop motor control works, to put everything we've discussed into practice. First, let's clearly define what we want to achieve. When the start push button is pressed, the motor should turn on, and when the stop push button is pressed, the motor should turn off. We start by adding a rung in our ladder program. For this illustration, I'm using simulation software. Next, we place the element for the start push button in normally open contact. Then, we add the motor coil. Let's check the program. When we press the start push button, the motor turns on. Now, we want to add a stop button. Think for a moment where the stop button should be added. We place a normally closed contact after the normally open contact. Let's test the program again. When the start button is pressed, the motor turns on. When the stop button is pressed, the motor turns off. This is how you build ladder logic step by step. For now, focus on getting familiar with these basic elements. In this video, I've explained the basics of ladder programming. If something is unclear or unfamiliar, don't worry. We'll cover ladder diagrams in detail in future videos. Please leave your questions or topics you want me to cover in the comments, and I'll include them in upcoming tutorials.